In today's video, we're going to talk about analog panel meters, or analog meter movements, like these here on the bench. You've seen these types of meters in lots of equipment that I've used in videos in the past, like my trusty Simpson 260 VOM, uh, or even the, the Bird 43 RF watt meter. You've also seen uh, analog meters in a lot of the projects that I've done myself, such as uh, the, uh, this project where I added a signal strength meter to the shortwave receiver kit, or even uh, my old uh, ESR meter that I did several years ago. So we'll talk briefly about how these meters work, but more importantly, how to test them to be sure they're good and to, to determine their characteristics so you can apply meters like this in your own projects. Now the vast majority of these meters are simply just low current ammeters, regardless of what scale is printed on them. Here's an example of a, uh, a meter that came out of a, an old power supply. It's got both a voltage and a current scale on it, but at the end of the day it's just a low current ammeter. Here's another example of a very large panel meter that has a very oddball scale on it, but at the end of the day the meter responds to a small amount of DC current. Now uh, oftentimes when these meters are used in equipment, uh, there'll be maybe a resistor placed in series to turn the meter into a voltmeter, or there might be a shunt placed in parallel with the meter to turn the meter into a higher current ammeter. There may be other circuitry like RF sensing circuitry or things like that to make things like RF ammeters, watt meters, etc. But at the end of the day, the meter movement itself is simply just a low current ammeter. Now nearly all of these meters employ a D'Arsonval meter movement which consists of a permanent magnet, a little cylindrical core, a coil of wire that is mounted to kind of a frame with bearings at either end with the pointer on it. And when you pass a DC current through that coil, it creates a magnetic field that reacts to the field of the permanent magnet that causes the, you know, the coil to rotate and the meter pointer to move along the scale. Along the shaft that is holding the moving coil assembly, there's typically a small little coiled up hairspring. And that's the thing that kind of holds the meter in its zero position when there's no current flowing. And when you pass current through that coil, uh, the force of the magnetic field is working against that spring, and that uh, determines essentially where the meter will point for a given amount of current flowing through that coil. And also, on the, uh, the face of a meter, you'll often see a little adjustment screw, uh, like right here where my thumb is pointing. And what that does is it adjusts the spring tension, usually on one of these springs, so that you can set the resting position of that uh, pointer at zero or at the bottom of the scale when there's no current flowing. It basically does that through a little bit of a lever action. You might be able to kind of see, if you look kind of carefully through the plastic here, uh, there's a little bit of a fork that comes down, and when you turn that screw, it just moves a pin back and forth in that fork, which applies a little bit of tension to the spring one way or the other to center that meter movement. Now, the majority of these meter movements um, have got a full-scale current range uh, that typically lies between, say, 50 microamps and 1 milliamp. There certainly are some that are more sensitive. Uh, and there's certainly some that are, uh, you know, less sensitive up on the other end of the scale. But the majority of the ones that you may find in the used market or reclaim out of old equipment are going to be like a 50 microamp full scale or 100 microamp, 200 microamp, you know, 1 milliamp. These are probably the most common that you'll find. Now the resistance of the wire in the moving coil will range typically from a few kilo ohms uh, for the most sensitive meters to maybe a few hundred ohms for the least sensitive meters. And of course, there's a lot of variation in here. And we'll take a look at uh, how we can actually go measure and characterize what a meter is. So if you've found one that you want to use in a project, uh, we can uh, determine what the full scale reading is so you can apply the appropriate external components to make that meter work in your project. First of the first thing you'll want to do is uh, kind of pick up the meter if you're picking up something used and gently rock it just to be sure that the, the meter itself isn't frozen or stuck. I'll at least tell you that uh, it's not grossly mechanically damaged. Uh, the second thing is to really carefully examine the face because on some of these, let's see if we can get that to show up here, the full scale reading is actually printed on them. This one says FS equal 1 milliamp, so full scale 1 milliamp. So we do, don't even have to go and test this thing to determine what the full scale reading is, 
but we certainly can test it to be sure it's still working. But that uh, at least tells you, you know, you know what the range is. And if your project needs a, you know, something like a 100 or 200 microamp full scale, then this might not be the meter for that project. Now this meter that was reclaimed out of a power supply whose, whose transformer burned up uh, doesn't have a reading on it or a, an indication on it of what its full scale reading is, so we're going to have to go measure this one. Now in some less common instances, you'll come across a meter like this one here that if you look at it, uh, it's rated there 1000 ohms per volt. That kind of indicates that this is kind of already set up as a voltmeter. And if we look at the back of it, you can actually see three terminals. There's a C or common terminal, and then a times 0.1 and a times 1. So this, and if you look really carefully, you can see the body of a resistor right here underneath the plastic and the body of another resistor right down there underneath the plastic. So this one already has the series resistors built in to turn this into either a 0 to 40 volt or a 0 to 4 volt voltmeter. Again, this is not often the case, but sometimes you'll run across these. So it, you know, it makes sense if you're you know, rounding through a junk pile to look for some meters for a project to take a careful look at uh, the meter, how it's marked, and if there are any built-in components, or if you're dealing with a simple low current ammeter that you're going to have to apply some components to yourself. So if you're shopping at uh, a Hamfest, a Radio Rally, or a um, surplus store, and you find a meter that you might uh, like to use for a project, you know, first thing, as we mentioned, is make sure that the meter movement itself isn't frozen or stuck by rocking it back and forth. As one other test you can do, you know, kind of still in the store or the flea market, to kind of see if the meter coil is working okay, is uh, a test that I call, you know, kind of a short and shake. Now, obviously, we've done the shake to be sure the meter is moving, just take a mental note of how far it's moving with a given amount of motion on the body. And then short the leads together. Just carry yourself a little uh, alligator clip lead here. Short the leads together and give it that same amount of shake. And notice with that same amount of shake, the meter is now not moving as much. If I remove the lead, notice how much more it shakes. Because by shorting that coil out, uh, you essentially create like a generator. And by shorting that generator out, generator out, the motion of the meter causes a back EMF which keeps the meter kind of damped. So uh, if the meter movement was the same, whether you're shorted or not, that might indicate that the coil itself is burned out uh, or is open. So it's an, a real quick go no-go test that you can still do before you lay your money down on a used meter to bring home and put into your project. Okay, so you've found a meter, it passed the wiggle test, it uh, passed the short and shake test, and um, so you decide to take it home. After a careful examination, you decide that it doesn't have any markings on it to indicate what the full scale current reading is. So that's something we can very easily test, and here's how you do that. So what I've got set up here is a variable DC power supply, something that can be dialed down to zero, and then up to typically at least 10 or 12 volts as a, as a good uh, power supply. Uh, connect that in series with an ammeter, and I guess we'll make this uh, you know, plus and minus here on the ammeter. And uh, you really want to have an ammeter that can read down to probably in the order of 50 microamps or so, uh, because you might have a very sensitive meter and you want to be able to accurately measure that. And then uh, I like to use a 10K resistor uh, in series with the meter and then back to the power supply. A 10K is a you know, kind of a convenient value. Because let's say, for example, you've got a meter that's got a 1 milliamp movement. That means that you're going to have a little more than 10 volts uh, creating a milliamp through the 10K resistor in the meter. Uh, and that's you know, certainly well within the, the power supply uh, range. But even if uh, in that same setup you're looking at a meter that's got a 50 microamp movement, that means the power supply is going to be dialed up to about a half a volt. And that's still reasonable to set up without having to change power supplies out. So a 10K series resistor is a convenient value to be able to test meters anywhere within this uh, 50 microamp to 1 milliamp range. Now if you don't have uh, an ammeter or a DMM that can accurately read down to these lower current levels, uh, another option is to not put the ammeter here at all, just essentially short that out. Um, and then apply the DC power supply and adjust it up until you read full scale and then measure the voltage across the 10K resistor. And then knowing the voltage across 10K and you can measure the 10K resistor's value itself, 
Ohm's law makes it very easy to calculate what that full scale current is. So let's go take a look at uh, testing a few of these meters. Let's start out testing this one that I pulled out of the power supply. It, it's not marked. Now most of the meters that I've come across, and it's not always the case, but most of them are, if you're looking at the terminals in the back, the one on the left is the positive terminal. If you look carefully at this one, I'm not sure if the camera will pick it up or not, but there's actually a plus kind of engraved or uh, stamped into the end of that stud. Uh, so if you don't know, you can start off with, with just a very low forward current and see which way the meter moves and then uh, you know, turn the polarity around if you have to. But most of the ones I've come across is that looking at the rear of the meter, uh, plus is on the left. Okay, so let's see what the full scale uh, current is for this meter. So if I take the negative side of my power supply, I'll hook it up to the negative side of the meter. And the positive side of the power supply is going up into the positive input of uh, my DMM reading current. The output side of that is going down to a 1K resistor, or excuse me, a 10K resistor. And the other end of that 10K resistor, we're going to connect up to the other end of the meter here. Right, so we'll enable the power supply. I'm going to start by incrementing in 10 millivolt steps just so that we can see which direction the meter goes in to be sure we have the pol uh, polarity correct. And I can see as I'm bringing this up that uh, we're going in the right direction on the meter so I know the power supply uh, or the polarity connection is right. So I'm going to change to increment now in 100 millivolt steps and we can essentially just walk the power supply up now until we bring the meter to full scale, you know, which is basically pretty close to there. And we can see that uh, we're running at 199 microamps, or essentially a 200 microamp full scale. So know that the full scale reading for this particular meter is 200 microamps. Now that we know that, uh, we can then design what series resistor we need to have in place to read a certain voltage, or we might uh, use it to measure current, or we might use it in another application, but we'll know that we'll have to design the circuit so that a full scale reading on this meter, for whatever it's going to indicate, would need 200 microamps of current. Now this very large panel meter doesn't have any markings on it either to tell us what it is. So again, we can kind of hook up the, uh, our connections the same way to the back of the, the uh, meter here. Uh, negative side and positive side, we'll start with that assumption. And uh, then we can turn the power supply on, start incrementing it up, and I can see that I'm going in the right direction here, so I've got the right polarity. So we bring this up until we get uh, basically our full scale reading. And we can see that this particular meter reads full scale with basically 100 microamps of current. So I know that this meter movement is a 100 microamp meter movement. When we examined this ancient meter earlier, uh, we discovered that it said the full scale reading should be 1 milliamp. And we can actually go uh, verify that. We increment just in 1 volt steps here. And I can actually bring that up now to full scale. And we can see that full scale we're reading basically one milliamp. So even though this meter is probably older than I am, it's still in uh, good working order. Okay, so now you've found and tested a really nice meter to use in your next project. To really take it to the next level, what you might want to do is create a custom scale. Um, now, you can, there's some really nice software that's available from Ton Software. And I'll put this link down below, but I'll just put it up here if you want to see it. It's tonsoftware.com slash meter2.html. And with that, you can create your own scale and print it out on a, a, a label maker or print it out on a, you know, some self-adhesive paper or something like that to make yourself a custom scale. So you just now need to get to the scale that's in this meter. Now, some meters, uh, I'm not going to say all of them, but certainly some of them allow you to kind of get to where that meter face is. For this particular one, you, you simply just pry back a couple of tabs on the plastic and then you can kind of pop the front cover right off of the meter. And with that cover popped off, you can essentially remove these two screws and slide out the metal scale very carefully. And you got to be really careful because now this whole meter movement is exposed. You also want to be sure that you do this in a very clean environment, especially clean of any metal shavings, because the, the magnet that is part of this meter movement is pretty powerful, and it'll attract anything that's magnetic right down in there and the, the clearances between the moving coil the, uh, and the, the center cylinder and the magnet itself are pretty small. Any dirt or grit or metal filings that get in there will bind up the meter moving, movement and it will basically be hosed. So be sure to do this in a very clean environment. But once you've got the meter apart, you, know, slide the, you, know, you can either apply a label right to the meter face here, or in some cases you can remove the meter face itself and then uh, either 
you know, make a sticker or do something like that to create a new meter face and then put the whole thing back together again uh, and you've got a nice custom meter. Now one thing to be careful of, we talked about that uh, the mechanical adjustment to center the meter. You can see this one is kind of a, this little slotted arrangement here. Inside of the case or the, the front bezel is that adjustment screw and you want to be sure when you put things back together that that, that pin that is on that little adjustment is going to align back up again with that adjustment when you put the bezel back on again. And once you've done that, you've got yourself a nice custom meter for your next project. I hope you learned a little something about these uh, uh, D'Arsenval type uh, analog meter movements and uh, you know how they're put together, how they're used, and how you go and uh, test them and even modify them for a project that you might be working on. Well, thanks again for watching. Uh, give me a big thumbs up on the video if you like it. If you haven't subscribed already, please do so and tell your friends. And we'll look for you again next time. Thank you.